Hey guys, how's it going? Gilly here from the Retro Oasis and today we're gonna talk about the Super Dock, which is an accessory for the new Odin handheld console. This uh, piece of hardware can transform your device into a hybrid gaming console, just like the Nintendo Switch. So let's take a look. Welcome to the Oasis. All right, let's go around a little bit and check the ports. On top here, we have a micro HDMI port. In the front, we have two uh, Nintendo 64 ports for the controllers and two um, USB type A ports. On the right and on the left, we have two ports for the Nintendo GameCube controller. I actually have one here and then we're gonna try it out in a little while. And we also have an HDMI port here. And in the back, <laughs> it's full of ports. We have a USB type C and this one is actually for the power an HDMI, uh, three USB type A and the Ethernet port. Uh, in the back here we have the Eng logo and we have four screws and then when we take this out we'll be able to put a um, internal hard drive here or SSD so when you put a console here we'll have an extra um, storage for it. And underneath as you can see here it's open for a better airflow and I believe underneath this rubber pads here, we have these screws, which you can open and then also remove this acrylic front here if you want to. And to connect this dock to the monitor or the TV, you just need to put the HDMI cable over here and the power USB type C cable over here. And that's it, you're good to go. You can just put your console here and the dock will automatically recognize the console. And that's what it looks like. When you put the console on, it starts charging. It vibrates and starts charging right away. It actually looks pretty good. A little better than the Nintendo Switch in my opinion. And I decided to remove this back cover so we can take a look. And after I remove the screws, it actually was very difficult to remove this cover, so I had to put a little tool in here and then pull back and, and that's it. I actually have a SSD here. It's just a small one, like 120 gigabytes. I'm just going to put it in so we can just have a, a try. That's it. That's it. When the holding goes into the dock, it shows on the monitor and I'm gonna put like a, a USB receiver so it's easier to navigate with a mouse and that's it just like that and I installed the file manager plus so if we open the app and you can see here my SATA SSD here with my games folder all working perfectly and to play you actually can use several types of controllers I'm using the MOGA XP5 right now. It's already connected with Bluetooth, as you can see here. But if I wanted to, I could just plug a USB here and then connect the other end to the controller and it would work just fine. Another option would be, I have here a GameCube controller, as I showed earlier, and I can just, let me turn out a little bit here, and then I can plug straight to the dock and you'll recognize, and I can just, as you can see here, it's plug and play, awesome. Nintendo 6, uh, I'm sorry, uh, GameCube controller working, you know, just plug and play. And just a reminder, before you start playing, you need to configure the GameCube controller. So you just go here, and then you go in GameCube input. And then the first one, you go disable, and then you click again and emulate it. And now you configure the buttons one by one. And when you're done, you just click and save, and then you can start a game. And I tell you what, you have an amazing experience playing Super Mario Sunshine, three times the resolution of the original GameCube on a Super Dock at 1080p. And the cool thing about using the original GameCube controller, it has analog triggers. So in other controllers, the, the only thing you could do is just press and then you would just go around with the water, that's it. 
But now with the analog triggers, the original GameCube controller, you can just press a little bit and then keep splashing. That's really cool. It's just a really enjoyable way to play. And there's nothing like to connect two controllers and beat your wife in a friendly game of Mario Kart Double Dash. It's priceless. or to beat a few bad guys with a partner in Final Fight 2 for Super Nintendo. Golden X3 for Mega Drive is also another great game for couch co-op. Another co-op game that's always fun is The Simpsons Arcade. I think the amount of quarters I spent in this game probably would buy the arcade. Android games will look great upscale to 1080p or 4K if you have a compatible monitor. If you want to remember the good times of the PlayStation 2, you'll have no issues doing that on a bigger screen.
and the xCloud works incredibly well with the Super Dock. And I'm not even using a wired connection. So you'll be able to play Xbox games without having an Xbox. And for my surprise, this Super Dock does work with the Nintendo Switch. As you can see here, I have my Nintendo Switch attached to it, and I got my Joy-Cons here, and it works perfectly on my 4K monitor. And just out of curiosity, I tried my Poco X3 Pro, and it works fine. So all the accessories, as you can see, my mouse works, and then if I go into the Fire Explorer, I can see the SATA, SSD here just fine. So it works, it charges as you can see up top here, but the image will not go into the monitor, so the dock won't transfer the image. Even though the Super Dock is not a necessary accessory, it's a great addition if you have or if you're gonna buy the Odin. It's awesome to transform the device into a hybrid console like the Nintendo Switch, especially if you take the emulation power into account here. Original PlayStation games look beautiful with the high resolutions that are possible here. So does GameCube, PS2, Dreamcast and PSP, taking the experience on par with tabletop consoles. We can also mention native Android games since their quality increased exponentially in the past few years and it looks great on a bigger screen. Connectivity is also a huge plus in the Super Dock, with plenty of additional ports where you can add several accessories such as keyboard and mouse besides the dedicated ports for Nintendo 64 and GameCube controllers. Not to mention the very well thought SATA expansion for HDDs and SSDs. It lets you store more games according to your preference. I was trying to think of a bad thing to say about the Super Dock, but it's difficult because it feels Aang did their homework before this thing was conceived. But if I had to change something, it would be the back cover for the storage expansion. After removing these screws, it's still difficult to remove the back panel. And you have to apply what I say, it's a bit of an unnecessary force. Together with the screws, it's just not practical every time you need to add games. But that's me being picky. In the end, the Super Dock is excellent and I only have good things to say about it. Well, this is all I have to say about the Super Dock, but I got more videos coming with the Odin handheld. And if this video was helpful to you in any way, consider leaving a like before you go and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Once again, Gilly here from the Retro Oasis. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.